Welcome again to Crop Life Retail Week. My name is Paul Shrimp. I'm executive editor of Crop Life Magazine with Eric Spilgoy, editor. Hello. Uh, this is our last uh, edition of, of Retail Week uh, for the year, and uh, we wanted to take the time to look back at 2014 and maybe look ahead uh, to 2015 and some of the key issues the retailers will be facing. Uh, looking uh, again, looking back, and then kind of looking ahead to how the how those issues will play out. Um, one of the things I thought was particularly interesting uh, in seeing some of the downturns coming uh, to retailers and ag and with the drop in farm income and the lower crop prices is how will that affect precision programs moving forward? And um, we talked to a number of retailers about that and, and the consensus pretty much was that retailers would be able to manage through these through consultative sale, selling, through really talking to growers about what they should and shouldn't cut using the base uh, precision programs that they have, um, making conscious decisions about about the about what sorts of things they should keep and, and and what they might be able to leave behind to save a little money, but still not affecting the data integrity uh, the integrity of the data that they're collecting um, and have on the books already. So. Um, uh, that was a good sign, I think. And Eric, I know you had a few thoughts about some of the things that you uh, you talked to retailers about. Why don't you share those with us? Sure, of course. Uh, yeah, the big issue, of course, had to do with uh, water quality issues, and it all stems from what happened in uh, the summer of 2014 in Lake Erie near Toledo, where there was an algae bloom and uh, drinking water was affected. Uh, a couple hundred thousand people could not. Uh, access water, take showers, drink any water for a couple of days, and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of different uh, speculation on the culprit behind the the bloom. But uh, agriculture, unfortunately, is in the crosshairs when it comes to some of the blame, and you're already starting to see legislation that's coming out that will impact how ag retailers and their grower customers apply fertilizer and products around waterways in 2015 and I know uh, retailers across the country are watching that issue very closely to see what it might mean for them. And along the same lines, uh, Crop Life magazine over the next 12 months through uh, 2015 beginning in January uh, will be starting a new project called Water Watch which will be a series of articles covering water from pretty much every different dimension. Irrigation, drainage, uh, water quality, regulatory issues, um, talking to the experts and the, the folks that are really involved in, in some of the water quality initiatives uh, to provide some feedback on, on what we could be, what we're doing, what we could be doing better, what we're already doing very well, and also to show regulators and to show um, uh, lawmakers that we're, we're doing a lot and that the, the efforts that we have have a lot of merit and um, to prove that the industry is, is doing what it can and, and continues to do even more to try to show that we care about uh, we care about these issues and we want to uh, we want to do the best we can for uh, for water quality overall. One other thing um, I wanted to mention was was that we've heard a lot about and it bore out in some of the research that we did was that uh, there is some concern about um, dropping uh, dropping revenues for retailers and ancillary products and. Uh, uh, Erica, maybe you can give us a few thoughts on, on what you found. Uh, sure. That was, this all stems from some of the uh, information we gathered in our buying intention survey, which uh, we'll put some information in the print edition of Crop Life Magazine's January edition. Um, but it looks like uh, you know everyone in the retail market is expecting, because of the drop in commodity prices, the growers are going to be looking to cut back wherever they can. And this not only will impact some of the uh, major crop input areas like dry fertilizer and application, but uh, the ancillary products such as micronutrients and uh, using fungicides as a preventive measure in the field, uh, those might be challenged as well. Uh, so it could be interesting to see what happens and if, uh, if things don't improve in the spring, then uh, those products may have a very rough go of it. And one other thing to wrap this up is um, there's been a lot of discussion over the past really 24 months about uh, the use of UAVs and, and the benefits and, and the challenges and opportunities with them. Um, and certainly growers uh, continue to be excited about the potential for that and there's certainly lots of one-off ways that, uh, that UAVs are, are proving beneficial. Uh, but retailers are telling me they're really challenged to come up with a, a genuine business plan that works for them. How can they purchase 
uh, enough of these units and have enough people on staff to, uh, to, to operate these things, operate programs, and then interpret the data and work the data into their normal programs. It's, it's a challenge and it may be something that gets worked out in the future. Uh, but retailers have enthusiasm has certainly been tempered over the last, I think, few months um, based on uh, some of the feedback that we've gotten on UAVs. But it's to be seen, and we hope to uh, get a little more clarity once the FAA figures out the regulations, which they're supposed to do by September of 2015. So that's it for this edition of Crop Life Retail Week. We appreciate you joining us. We wish you a wonderful holiday season and good success in 2015, and we'll see you next year.